Good morning, modern steaders. Yesterday we harvested our two pigs, sausage and lynx. I'm not going to do a video on us harvesting them. If you want to see a video on that, we have some awesome videos from last year. I'll put a link to that playlist right here. Today we're going to be doing the cutting up of the meat, and I thought I'd talk a little bit of the harvesting yesterday. What we've been using for tools is we have our meat saw, bone dusters. When you cut into the bone and you have bone dust, you scrape it off the meat. We'll be using those today. Then we have boning knives, some other knives, and then a meat cleaver. This is all we'll be using today to cut our halves up. One of the things we did different this time is instead of scalding them and scraping them, we wanted to know how skinning them worked, if it saved any time. And I've had a lot of people ask me, if you don't have the setup to scald and scrape them, can you skin them and how does it go? So we wanted to figure that out this time and find out. Which pig do you think weighed more than the other one? And what do you think their weights were? Pause the video, take a guess. Don't go on any further. So we weighed the two pigs and sausage, which was the red one, to me looked bigger. But believe it or not, Lynx was the bigger one, which surprised me. She weighed 239 pounds and sausage weighed 233 pounds. So there wasn't a big difference, but I would have thought that sausage was the one who would have weighed more. When we're raising the pigs, we're trying to get them right to around 250 pounds. So we were right there on target with the pigs this year. We ended up having a nor'easter blowing yesterday. We were able to get all of the outside work done before too much of the rain came, which was nice. I have my hose on a reel set up the way we do, so this way we can disconnect it. I can bring the hose in the basement if it freezes at night. We don't got to worry about our hose freezing up. Then I have a hot water and a cold water outdoor faucet so we can have hot water to our outdoor kitchen sink. Right there. She said, you're not. I said, she said, I don't care. I said, you got to help. She goes, you're joking, right? I said, I'm not joking. I knew she keep saying that. She was running a bag in the hide in the head. Next to last year, next to that time. Cut the jowls out of the one we did and made the bacon out of. Yeah. He was right into it. Right there, yeah. You can't show him that. Putting it down right there, that was the second one. Do we pull that membrane off them spares? We might not have.
That's one you want to go through right there. Yep. So what roast do you yeah. want out of that, Al? Two. Right there, Rick. Right? Wait, that size? Uh, a little less. A little less. It's amazing. You know, it's, I just, even, it's cold. It's yeah. not even like huh? set up. So, I mean, if it was frozen, it'd go even better. Or, We ground up 111 pounds of meat with the meat grinder and it took us just over 30 minutes to do it all. We're using the Cabela's Carnivore one horsepower meat grinder. We had two pigs that we got that meat from. One of the pigs we're keeping to feed our family through the winter and we raised the other pig for my father. I already teared it, so it's 16.6 kilograms, which is how much you need. I'll figure out the ingredients. Yep. All right. 
So what we do to make our breakfast sausage, or any of our sausage, is we weigh it up. We weigh it up in kilograms, and then we convert it over to grams because it's easier to figure out the percentage. And we use one and a half percent of salt, and then we do one and a half percent maple syrup for our sweetener. And we like sage in our breakfast sausage. So in this one, we did I think it was right around 37 pounds of ground pork to make into breakfast sausage. So we used one and a third cups of sage for this. Then we're just mixing the meat nice and thoroughly. We want to make sure we have a consistent mix throughout the meat so we know that the spices and herbs are all thoroughly combined. Now before we package up our sausage, we want to just make a little patty up, put it on our wood cook stove, fry it up, and give it a good taste test to make sure we like all the seasoning and the spices. And if we don't at this point, we're just going to go back, add a little bit more, whatever we think it needs, and then we'll package it up. show you I'm surprised we didn't get that much bacon. Now these pigs didn't have much bacon on them. This bacon we have right here is from both the pigs which is a good amount but it's not as much as the last pigs. So you like the other pigs better? Nope. These pigs weighed just had they were different. They had not as much fat on them and more meat and they didn't have as much bacon. They had really nice pork chops on them. You just want to get them all in one bag, kind of? Or two bags. Can, well, just, it doesn't matter how much you put in the bag. Correct. Because you're trying to cure it. We're going to cure this and turn it into bacon later on or the Or do you street. want it laying down? Do you want it? Laying down. Okay, right there. <clears throat> later on this week, I'll put the cure on it and I'll stop curing it. Just don't feel like doing it tonight. I don't think you did enough stuff today. No. One, two. Different bag. That is large. Leaf large. And you want it in front bag? Yep. Or are you going to wrap it? No, nope, that will put into a freezer bag. Big freezer bag. And then I'll render that down a different day. It's going to do all the bacon instead of just doing it. Correct. And do it all up. So then we can just have bacon whenever. Right. When it's raining out this week, which is like every day, <laughs> I'm going to cure this up and render it. It took four of us eight hours the first day to do the harvesting, the eviscerating, and the halving of the pigs. And then we cut up one of the pigs into the primal cuts the first night. And then the next day, we cut up the other pig, and that took about four hours, cutting the pig up, getting all the meat cut up into chunks that we wanted to, to grind up into sausage and ground pork. And we got everything packaged up. So about 12 hours, four of us, that have never done it ourselves without any assistance before. We had a great book, all the tools that I used and the book that I was using for a reference guide. I'm gonna have a link in the description down below to our Amazon page and it's gonna have most everything that we use there. So the two pigs that we raised, we're not keeping them both for just our family. We're keeping one for us and then my dad, we raised the other pig for him. So we're gonna have plenty of meat for this winter. We need to cure up our bacon and get that curing, then we'll be able to smoke it. This week, it's supposed to be raining pretty good. So, within the next couple of days, I'll get the cure going. We'll get some bacon made. We'll be eating good. I wanted to thank you for coming along on our journey with us. There's a lot of you guys that have been here with us since we since before we had the piglets, but a lot of you have been watching us raise up our pigs from piglets to when we just harvested them. I appreciate our pigs. We have them for a purpose, and now we'll be able to eat good food all throughout the winter. We know where it came from. We know what they were fed. 
we know it's going to be feeding us. So thanks again for coming along with us. We really appreciate you guys and all your support. If you got to scald and scrape your pig, you got to get a 55 gallon drum, be able to raise your pig up about 14 feet up in the air and dunk them down into this 55 gallon drum of water that's about 153 degrees warm. Dunk them in there for about three minutes, swish them around in the water, pull them out, check it, see if you can get the hair to fall off. If not, you go back down. You can do about half of the pig's height from about here down in one swoop. Scrape it all, put your pig down on a pallet, hook the other feet up, raise it back up in the air, and dunk it in a 55 gallon drum again, and do the other half. Scrape it, then you go on to eviscerating it, and then getting it half. So we, I've never skinned one before, but people ask all the time, can you do it, and what's, what's the difference? <clears throat> so we did it this year, skinned it like you would a deer or a rabbit, or just like a regular four-legged animal. I was curious to know if it took any less time, and it probably took a little less time. It didn't save us that much time. I'm gonna say the biggest time saver was not setting up the 55 gallon drum and heating the water up. If you're planning ahead, you can do that and it's not gonna add much more time on. That being said, if you liked having the skin on your roast or if you like cooking the skin and eating the skin, you're not gonna have it by doing this method. If you don't have the setup to scald and scrape a pig, but you still want to try to harvest your own pig, go ahead and skin it. There's nothing wrong with it.